Hi, welcome to the Craft Channel. My name is Corinne Brad, and today I'd like to show you how to make some simple bunting like we have behind me um, without wasting any fabric at all. So you can get a nice crenellated edge, as it were, with no offcuts. First of all, you need two templates, which I'll put in the description below, and they are quite simply a rectangle that I have cut into an arrowhead shape. If you grab yourself a piece of fabric and lay your arrowhead shapes on the fabric and draw around them with a pencil, you'll find that the tip of one fits into the pendant side of the other, and that's why we call it no waste, because there's no funny bits that you've cut off at the corners. Another quick tip to back your bunting, I mean, you can make it double-sided with two different colours. If you're hanging it from tree to tree and you want people to see it from each side, then it's advisable to put a nice colour on the back. But if you're just gonna put it against a wall, you may as well cut up an old sheet and uh, these are cut into 10 centimetre wide strips and just pin your fabric to the old sheet right sides together. And just a couple of pins, like so. And what you can do if you're making lots of this bunting is just continue to pin along that piece of sheeting but if I try and make you a whole row of bunting in one video, it will be midnight before you finish watching it. So I'm just going to show you how to do this bit. And I'm going to sew just a few mil inside that pencil line, which is alien to me because normally I sew on the pencil line. But because I'm going to use that as a cut mark, we need to be inside it. So just line that pencil mark up to a suitable line on your presser foot. Needle in couple of locking stitches at the back and this is a straight stitch it's about two and a half millimeters long sew down needle in to pivot the fabric and it's important that you put the needle in to pivot the fabric because as soon as you release your presser foot your fabric has a tendency to go wherever it wants and it's very hard to locate the sewing line you're on. Oh. So that's one done. And so the other one, in the same way with the same seam allowance. Take your pins out and then cut your two pieces in half along that pencil line. And actually I'm just going to trim off the edges of this. You don't have to do it on uh, long strips of fabric, you can do it on any scrap of fabric that you like, as long as you can get that pennant shape on there. And then what I am going to do is just carefully cut those corners off so that when you turn it the right side out, you've got a nice point. And you'll also need to just clip up there. Again, cut these corners off. And it's really just to reduce the bulk of your fabric so that you get a nice clean turnout. Let's just pop them in the bin. This one's dead easy to turn out because it is three outermost points. Like so. And just make them nice and sharp with the closed blades of your pair of scissors. And then this one. Got 
your two little pennants, or two little pennant points, should I say. I might actually just use a knitting needle to get those points out because that's got a round enough in a rounded enough end it's not going to pierce your fabric so that's how you'd make your two shapes like so and then if you give them a press and you can top stitch all the way around the edges so you end up with a nice selection of shapes and colours and then very easily to put them onto your tape if you get some cotton tape we'll come to this bit in a minute if you sew let's see how I've done this sew your pennant right side up onto the top edge of your tape like this And that stitch doesn't have to be so great. It doesn't matter if the tops of your pennants are not, you know, if the um, lining is higher than the coloured bit. Because what you'll then do is flip it over like this. Pop a little pin in it. And top stitch on the front of the work because that way you can get a much neater finish because you can see where your stitching is actually going. So I'm just going to top stitch this and I am just going to make sure that I can see what I'm doing. And you should be able to uh, do a continuous strip of bunting on the top stitch all the way along. Just get rid of any nasty little ends as you go along and make sure that tape is folded over in half. I won't sew all of this but you get the general idea. So it makes a nice neat finish on the top of your bunting and this is bunting this will last you for years I mean you can make it for bedrooms you can make it for gardens because it's all cotton it will all go in the washing machine you know once it's been rained on and it's a great stash buster so if you've got odd pieces of fabric that really aren't big enough to do anything with just save them up create some bunting and brighten up somebody's life Hope you enjoyed that demonstration. I hope that's inspired you to get sewing again if you haven't done for a while. And uh, we will catch up with you soon with some more great ideas. Thank you very much for watching. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.